Reached a point in your small fabrication shop, you're considering if it's time to add CNC plasma. I'm hoping to share my experience. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the DIY approach. There's thousands of videos available that gives you an idea of how to build your own table. I kind of messed around with that idea, but I, I soon realized that the DIY approach was not what I was trying to go into business for, right? I wanted to get it into business to cut parts, make parts for the shop, and I didn't know enough to start building my own plasma table. I know lots of guys have, I'm not sure how it works out in the end, the longevity of that, but there's a lot of guy needs to learn and I'm, my shop was not in the business to build the tools that we needed. Next step was doing research and trying to find the cheapest table we could find. And we found it. It's a bolt together unit. A four by four setup was our first table that we went with, basically less than six grand. I really want to emphasize the importance of going to solid structure, fully welded tables. They're heavy, they're sturdy, they're going to cut faster because they can handle the speeds. Um, bolt together tables can't handle the speeds. When that thing's moving really fast and stops and changes directions, <laughs> those tables move. I want you to consider that when you're looking at your budget, um, looking at what's out there, um, consider boss tables. They've been great for us. They've been so great. We actually run two um, boss tables in the shop. We have one fully dedicated to just the sign department and we have one fully dedicated to just the parts um, in the fabrication shop. Another feature to consider is water table or downdraft. For us, we chose water table. What, what does a water table allow us to do? First of all, it cuts down on the fumes. There's a lot of fumes that comes from plasma cutting um, and it, it absorbs some of those fumes. And then the other was just uh, material warpage. We're putting a lot of heat into this material. So when you're cutting a lot of small parts out, you're going to notice warpage. The water table helps eliminate a lot of that issue. So consider that in your purchase. The other thing is going to be torch height control. There are tables out there, budget friendly tables that don't offer torch height control. Our first ever table did not have torch height control. And when your cutting material starts to move and that torch height control is going to counter that and make sure you maintain the same basically distance to, to workpiece and get um, good quality cuts. You found the plasma table. It hits all the points you need. It's the, you, you figured out the size. You figured out if you want water uh, table or a downdraft table. You figured out if you're gonna go with a bolt together unit or a, um, a fully welded unit. Some things that you're gonna need outside of the table is first of all, you're gonna need a plasma cutter, right? You're gonna need your machine. That's something you need to consider in your costs. There's a lot of machines out there. Hypertherm is one of them that can really integrate with just about any CNC plasma table out there on the market. We went with Hypertherm. We went there with their PowerMax 65. It was kind of bought all together. Um, it was a package. If you're looking at a, you know, let's say you're just kind of working with a budget. I would recommend buying the plasma cutter first. That way you can start doing work with your plasma cutter. As you start getting more money built up and you're able to look into the CNC process and get to a table, having a unit like this is going to allow just an easier integration for most tables out there. The next thing you're going to have to consider is air. You need dry air. So for us, we run these 80 gallon compressors. You know, you can buy these compressors. This is the 10 horsepower two stage uh, compressor. You, this is something you get at, at your local tractor supply or, or local hardware store, but you're gonna need the volume. You're gonna need as much air as you can get, especially um, when those tables are running all day. Um, the more air you have, you need a compressor that's gonna keep up with it. And then we need to talk about drying this air. You need, you need an air dryer and you need filters. The way we do it is um, you need a refrigerated dryer. So running your refrigerated dryer, we have also with included with this, we run um, a water separator, a second stage oil filter, our desiccant air, 
um, filter and then a final stage filter. And then there's also uh, another water separator filter on the plasma cutter itself. You can buy the rechargeable indicating silica balls basically. So once these get saturated with moisture, they turn pink. We remove them at that point. You can put them into an oven, dry them back out. They'll turn blue again. I can show you what they look like. But it's basically just these little desiccant balls. It's the same things you, you see in those little packs that they say don't eat. But all of this is going to help you keep moisture out of your air lines, which is going to help your torch height control. It's going to help your cut quality. Remember, the torch height control is based off of a voltage reading. So when you add moisture into a cut, it messes up consumables. You're going to go through consumables a lot faster and it changes your voltage readings, which is going to mess up your torch height control. So dry air is a must when you're running these CNC plasma tables. And this is the part right here when it comes to any of this CNC stuff is spending the time to learn how to create your own files. Now, there are plenty of files that you can purchase through Etsy, on the internet, there's, there's tons of DXFs or SVGs that you can purchase, bring into your computer, do some modifications. Most of those files you have to touch up and fix, and you can cut things out on your table. But keep in mind, when you're going, especially signs, another thing that comes to mind are collapsible fire pits. When everyone first gets their table, they're cutting out these collapsible fire pits, custom sign work, right? Well, everyone is selling the same thing because everyone is buying the same file. They basically change fonts and, and things like that. But if you want to separate yourself from the rest, spend a lot of time on this. Inkscape is one of those programs that is a free program. There's lots of information out there. Uh, QCAD is another one. There, there's lots of information out there that you can spend the time to learn how to create files, learn how to draw files, uh, learn how to fix files, to bring them to your CNC table and uh, cut out parts that is different from everyone else. And the other thing to consider also is the power supply. This here runs off a 220 single phase. So you'd want to have 220 single phase, a 50 amp breaker in your shop. You think of the computer, you, you know, you need a 110 power for the computer. So those are all variables. You need power, you're gonna need the air and all the components to get you the dry air and spend time learning how to draw files and create files. The CNC part of this is pretty standard. Guys can learn how to zero a sheet, how to square a sheet, load a file, nest a file, but it's creating the files is where most people will come into a, a, a shortcoming, especially when you have people driving up with cardboard drawings and they say, hey, can you cut a part out like this for me? Um, I need it for a project I'm working on. You need to be able to get into your program and create that file because you more than likely you're not going to be able to just go somewhere and buy it. When it comes to deciding if you're going to go with CNC, there are so many variables um, involved in this that's just going to open doors and and change your even your fabrication process uh, think about the way you were doing it before basically structural steel welding structural steel making shapes making products when you include cnc plasma prototyping so when you have ideas you're going to be able to bring it to life here um, maybe you're a really good artist artist and you can draw things you can take those drawings put it into a file and now you can cut out 50 of those and in, in half the time it would take you if you were cutting it all out, out by hand. Basically bring your art to life at scale so that you can sell that product. Um, I mean, ideally, right? We're all trying to make money with our plasma table. I kind of touched on a lot of the points, a lot of questions guys may have when it's time. I know it's, it's the things that I didn't know about when we first got in the plasma table and we've learned through the years. CNC Plasma is going to open a lot of doors for you. I highly recommend checking out Boss Tables. If there's ever any issues, Boss Tables is a phone call away and they're on it. And, and that, was a, that was really huge for us, especially in the beginning, just, just trying to figure it all out, right? So CNC Plasma will open doors for your shop. It's going to give you opportunities to fabricate things. It's going to 
especially when you get in the CNC plasma and you start pairing in press breaks and things like that. It's gonna change your whole outlook on fabrication to bring your ideas to life at scale. So instead of just being able to make one part, you're now gonna be able to make that one part and then easily just reproduce it and um, add it to your projects that you're building or maybe you're cutting parts out for someone else that's building something else. I want to start doing a series on all the tools that change the shop and how all of these, these tools at a small shop scale can really open up a lot of doors for you. So make sure you subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell that we can, so you know every time we post a video and hopefully we can share a lot of our experiences with you.